How's everybody doing? Good. <laughs> First of all, I want to thank Cesar and a team of folks that work with him to make this event possible. I know you guys worked hard over the last couple of weeks, so thank you. Uh, we're seeing that people all over the district and all over the region and in different parts of the country are paying attention to this congressional race. They realize that this is the first congressional race after the November election and that it will send a powerful message. Powerful message that will distinguish uh, the clarity between a traditional Democrat and a real progressive Democrat that will stand uh, to the interests of, of people and put money out of politics and run a clear agenda. Right. So we're really excited by this race. Right. My name is Arturo Carmona and I'm running for Congress in the 34th Congressional District and I'm really happy to be here with you. I'm humbled to be here because we're seeing support from different parts of, of the state and, uh, and this is the way we're going to win. I was raised in Southeast Los Angeles to immigrant parents from uh, Mexico and I remember, <laughs> I remember growing up, my parents worked really hard to provide a modest living, working class family, uh, came to this country to fulfill the American dream but they never gave up and within a few years, a decade of being in this country, they were able to buy a house. That's certainly so not something that you're able to say today with the skyrocketing housing costs. But they, they worked hard and they raised us to do good and put us through college. Uh, pretty, pretty much all of us went through college. And uh, they always talked to us about justice, about making a difference in the world, about ensuring that we can use the support that they gave us and the gifts that they gave us to, so, to ensure that others can have those benefits. And uh, I think some of those values uh, are definitely ones that live in us, especially because I, when I remember when I was in high school, that's when I started getting engaged during Proposition 187. It was a very nasty piece of legislation that attacked immigrants, that sought to prosecute and criminalize immigrant families in California and really wo awoke a new generation of voters in this, in this state that changed the face of democratic politics. And so uh, I've stayed engaged throughout my career after Prop 187 and college. I became student body president, advanced progressive politics, was an activist in college, worked in Sacramento for a couple years, and I had a major awakening when I worked in Sacramento. I uh, came into Sacramento believing that I was going to follow a career in politics, that I was going to be inspired to change the world. But I quickly learned that uh, with the way politics are run in California and across the country that you're not going to real, really make systemic change in, unless you get money out of politics. That politicians cater to special interests, that politicians cater to the top 1% and I promised not to run for politics. I, run it, I promised myself never to run for office and I came back to LA. I, I worked in the legal community. I worked in the immigrant community, I worked in the digital advocacy community, and I have dedicated pretty much every day of my professional career to making a difference, to working for working families, middle class families, uh, immigrants, workers, uh, people that are vulnerable in our society, to elderly, whether it was advocating for immigration reform or opposing the Trans-Atlantic uh, Pacific Partnership, whether it was uh, getting money out of politics or protecting climate change or, ho or holding Democrats accountable or Republicans. That's been my career path, all of my career. Uh, I am proud to say that I help found organizations in downtown Los Angeles, immigrant rights organizations that are robust and uh, still thriving. I worked in a digital organization that spoke truth to power, that talked about the abusive relationship that Latinos have with the Democratic Party uh, when it comes to a number of issues. Uh, but, and I've spoken on many issues ranging from climate change to the money that Democrats take from uh, fossil fuels, the fossil fuels industry and many other sources, Wall Street, you name it. Uh, and I made a, a, a name for, for myself within the Latino community of speaking truth to power. And so in the summer of 2015, uh, I met with a gentleman by the name of Jeff Weaver uh, who worked for Senator Bernie Sanders. Um, and <laughs> And right there on the spot, they offered me a position to work as a National Latino Outreach Director. I told them that I needed to go back home to California and, and check in with my family and my organization, who I had made a long-term commitment and was making a, a good living. 
uh, and it was a stable job, and I knew that I'd be taking a risk with a senator from Vermont that nobody in my community knew. Yeah. <laughs> and a cut and pay, too. And a cut and pay, and a major sacrifice with a young daughter. But I, I le learned that throughout the years working in advocacy in the nonprofit sector, you know, walking precincts, many years of advocacy, that we had won important battles, that we had made a difference in California or in specific issues in D.C., but that if we really wanted to make a systemic change on the critical issues impacting our families, we really needed to make a national movement. We really needed to throw ourselves in the ring and fight for our ideal, ideals. And so I joined the Bernie Sanders campaign. I took the risk. I was the first prominent Latino uh, member of the, of the campaign. And within three months, I was promoted from the National Latino Outreach Director to become the National Political Director, Deputy Political Director. Uh, and, and it was just a few months, and it was a, a major task, it was a major challenge. Uh, but working with the Bernie campaign allowed me to see that this country is really ready, and it was hungry for real change, was hungry for a message that spoke to economic change, that would say class matters in this country. You need to talk about class, and the fact that there is a wealth redistribution happening in this country from the middle and working class families to the top 1% that we need to talk about the fact that the Democratic Party is addicted to the money from special interests and for cor corporations that have corrupted the agenda of the Democratic Party to compromise its values, to compromise its commitment to working immigrants, Muslims, uh, minorities, and people of color, you name it. Uh, and so that's why when I joined uh, the Bernie campaign, we were able to awoke, awaken a real movement from Iowa, to Nevada, to Illinois, to New York, to California, winning 22 states across the country, uh, it was a real adventure. It, we were, had some major downs, but crazy ups, thanks to everyday people like yourselves that never gave up, that spoke truth to power, that were courageous, that gave 27 bucks, a hundred, a dollar, five bucks. It was able to sustain a movement never seen in modern American history. And so, you know, at, at the end of that path, in July of 2016, I decided to come back to LA and to get a new job, but then this seat opened up in December of 2015. And I remember District 34. It was a district that we worked very hard. It was a district where we worked diligently to win the hearts and minds of voters. It's a very di diverse district, majority Latino, majority Asian. Uh, a growing white population in the district, and we won that district by a very considerable amount of votes and a percentage margin. And so when we uh, spoke with my family, with my Bernie family in D.C. and different folks across the country, they encouraged me to run. They said, we need to win this district because this is not just about District 34. This is about bringing the political revolution to Southern California, yeah. to Long Beach, to L.A., to saying that when we're talking about money out of politics, that we're not just talking about this random location in, you know, in D.C. or in the South. We're talking about downtown L.A. and polit politicians that are taking money from major developers, that are taking money from private prisons. And th this includes people running in this district, in this race, at this time, for Congress at this moment. People taking money from Wall Street, from major developers, even from Republicans. And yet they call themselves progressives. And yet they, they, they call themselves the most progressive candidate running in the, in the race. But we're here to tell them that there's a new day. After Bernie Sanders, there's a new day where being a progressive is no longer just calling yourself a progressive. And beating yourself in the chest and saying, I'm the most progressive elected official running for this position. It means real values, a real authenticity to people to the most vulnerable, to middle class families, to reversing the trend that we've seen over the last four decades that is literally transitioning billions of dollars to the top 1% from everyday people. And to do that, you need courage. You need to have authenticity and say no more money into our campaigns from these dirty sources. And that's what we've done in our campaign and we're inspiring donors and people and volunteers from all over the country from our district, of course, but we're getting donations from all over the country. We've, we're closing up on 2,500 individual contributions from a dollar to five to 27 bucks, of course. We have an average donation of about 27 bucks, and we're staying in the fight. 
We're not going to raise as much money as Jimmy Gomez or Sarah Hernandez, but we're going to stay in the fight. But we are going to beat them in many other areas, in our digital operation, in our ground operation, and in winning the hearts and minds of everyday people. And that's what we're going to win, and that's what's going to put us across the finish line. And so we're gearing up to an election. It's seven weeks away. We see a clear path, a clear lane to victory. It's a special election. Uh, and we believe that if everyday people from this district and from the surrounding communities, from Long Beach, from Whittier, from the southeast where I was raised, we're getting people from Riverside, from the San Gabriel Valley, from San Fernando, coming to volunteer to make phone calls, to say we're going we're gonna to walk precincts, we're going to knock on doors, that's the way we're going to win. Yep. Because I believe that Bernie Sanders opened a window of opportunity. Right. It's going to close if we don't take yeah. advantage. It's going to close if we don't seize that moment. We have a moment right now, folks. If we take this opportunity and win District 34, and if we get up there and pull other progressives to win in the assembly and city council races, in the Senate and at the state level, then we can seize that opportunity and keep that window open. So I see that window, and I want to make sure that all of us see that window and that we fight hard as hell to win that district. There's a unified political establishment that if it's up to them, you know, this race is over. They already have their anointed candidate. The, the Democratic Party endorsed them with 55 to 0, uh, despite having the most qualified slate of candidates in the last generation. They snuck up 55 votes in the middle of the last couple of days and you know before everybody presented the Democratic Party uh, endorsed without hearing a single other candidate. That's the type of shenanigans that we continue to see from the Democratic Party and the only way we're going to win is speaking truth to power and calling their the way that the, their the dirty games and their dirty tricks and that's why we're inspiring people, we're inspiring voters and this district is made up of immigrants, uh, of you know white people, friend, uh, my brothers and sisters that are hipsters uh, you know, chipsters, we're all coming together and we're going to win this together because we believe that the Democratic Party establishment, and I would venture to say that even the Republicans have continued to push a number of wedge, wedge issues that distract us. But if we keep our, our, our eye on the prize, on the fact that this is about class, this is about bringing people together, it's about race, it's about religion, it's about all these issues and understanding the interconnectivity of all these issues, but not losing our focus that we need to come together uh, as people, then we're going to win this race and we're going to win this fight and we're going to turn it around. And I think that we're going to be facing critical races for the heart and soul of the Democratic Party in terms of the leadership. And this is all connected. So I would continue to, to challenge you to continue to support us. Um, we're, we have a sign-up list going around. Uh, I hope that you can give to our campaign and support us in the coming weeks and, and months because we're going to take it to the general. So I, I really appreciate your support. It means a lot to me. And I guess we're going to open up to questions, but I'm really excited about this race, folks. I think we have the energy, we have the volunteer base, and we're going to take it all the way. So thank you so much. I got you back, man. <laughs> thank you.